call the June 19th meeting of the Person Board of County Commissioners to order at this time and acknowledge that we uh, do have a quorum and we'll ask um, Commissioner Sims to lead us in an invocation and Commissioner Perry Year to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. If you will pray with me. Dear Holy Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be here today to conduct business of Person County. Uh, we ask that uh, you be with those who are going through some difficult times and we just lift them up and pray that you will comfort them. We pray for the safety of all the people who risk their lives every day for our county and for our nation and we lift them up to you as well and keep them safe. Lead us and guide us as we go forth and help us make wise decisions for our county today and we pray this in your most heavenly name. Amen. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on the agenda is discussion, adjustment, approval of the agenda. Uh, any discussion, adjustments? Move for approval. Motion on the floor to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carried. First on our agenda uh, today is informal comments where we set aside 10 minutes at each meeting for. Uh, Grant with no match. So that means there's no extra expense other than the tax dollars that already fund many of those grants, but nothing specific from Person County or the City of Roxborough to cover the costs of this planning project. We were one of only 30 local governments that were fortunate enough to receive funds in the first round of that particular grant cycle. Uh, and that will go to fund the entirety of the planning and design work for the project and hopefully set us up to be able to apply for additional grants and funds to handle construction when we get to that point. Uh, the city did go through a process to select the firm, the consultant firm that would help design the project. Trans Systems, who have offices in Asheville, Charlotte, Raleigh, and Wilmington, so will serve as the consultant. Uh, they've already been doing a lot of work with us and will be presenting a final concept plan to the City Council at their July 11th meeting. As far as the plan development, we did want to make sure that this included plenty of opportunity for public comment and feedback. Uh, this is the public's plan. It's not just the City of Roxborough's plan. It benefits every person who lives, works, plays, or visits Roxborough and Person County. Uh, we did go through a variety of information to try and get some background research on the Uptown District, uh, traffic analysis utilizing information from our police department, and working with traffic specialists to determine where we have some problem intersections or opportunities to improve both the pedestrian and vehicular safety in Uptown. Uh, we did do a architectural resource and historic character assessment, so basically that's looking at the historic elements of the Uptown District and ensuring that our plan will not only keep those safe and protect those for the future, but hopefully look for opportunities to draw even more attention to those with future designs. Um, natural resources and environmental assessment, obviously with any project that we do, we wanna be careful to make sure we're not creating issues for the natural environment, animals or plant life that may be in the area. So that was evaluated as a part of this process. And then lastly, we did hold a public survey just to get some feedback from members of the public business owners, property owners, and residents who have opinions about what are some of the main challenges that we face, but also what are some of the best aspects of Uptown. Uh, the point of the plan is to increase the positive, but work on where we have some challenges, so we wanted to make sure we captured all of that through that public survey. Uh, and then lastly, we had a concept plan presentation that took place at City Hall on April 18th. Members of the public had an opportunity to come and view maps, uh, see images related to the concept plan, provide feedback, and generally, um, after viewing the presentation, have sort of an open house style conversation, both with city staff and with the representatives from the consultant firm. So before you are some concept plan images. Um, basically, this just kind of gives you an idea of where we are in this process. Uh, this first slide here shows you what we've identified. So the dashed circle areas that you'll see, those are some complex intersections. Basically what that means is there's some unique 
movements that take place with the vehicles in those locations. Um, some of those are just wider intersections, so people tend to, I'll say freestyle their way through those intersections a bit. Uh, and then we have a couple where the, the interaction with the pedestrians and the vehicles is a little unique. And so we wanted to make sure we focused on those quite a bit. The dark blue circles that you'll see, those are the identified gateways to Uptown. Uh, the museum and the library tend to be sort of the bookends for Uptown. Uh, while they're not in the core of the commercial district, they do start of, sort of start and end that particular area and help identify what is considered to be Uptown. Uh, you'll see the purple lines throughout. That just identifies the project area, so that's the specific areas under consideration as a part of this project plan. And then you also will notice uh, the blue lines with the arrows that sort of identifies where most of the vehicular traffic tends to frequent. Uh, Main Street, of course, being the most traveled thoroughfare. And then moving on to the next slide, uh, this gives you an idea of the master concept plan, where it stands right now. Now, obviously, when we get to the end of this, we'll have far more detailed maps really zoomed into specific areas. Uh, with some specific images to kind of help you get an idea of what each individual street might look like. But just as an overall, this is where things stand as of today. Some of the items that you may notice, uh, the green circles, those are trees. So that's identified areas where we can add some more street trees to both help with overhead canopy that makes pedestrians have a better uh, ability to walk regardless of the weather. Um, so if it's very hot, they provide shade. Uh, if it's raining, you've got a place to seek a little refuge, trying to get from space to space. Uh, the orange sort of cubes, I'm gonna say squares, but they're a little more rectangular. Those identify parking. So you may notice that there's some additional parking proposed on South Main Street and on North Main Street, as well as on Fashi on the back side of the farmer's market there. Uh, basically what we're looking at is trying to make sure that we can add as much parking as possible without necessarily having to take away space that could be used for infill development. Um, there is a lot of opportunity for on-street parking and that has multiple benefits. Uh, one of course is just generally providing more parking with existing infrastructure. We don't have to go and tear up areas and pour more asphalt. We can simply utilize existing infrastructure. Also, with the own street parking, one of the issues that we've identified with North Main Street and South Main Street is the speed with which vehicles travel through that area. Um, Uptown is obviously somewhere we want pedestrians to feel safe and that they can spend time and walk casually through to shop or eat. And so one way to hopefully help slow the traffic down is to actually narrow the road a bit. And by having online, uh, online <laughs> on street parking, uh, that will actually make the road seem more narrow. You'll have added benefit of the parking on the street, but then also narrowing the street a bit and slowing down the traffic, hopefully helping with that pedestrian safety. Um, and beyond that, we're also just trying to increase the green areas in Uptown. Uh, one of the things Person County is so well known for is our beautiful landscapes. And so we wanna make sure that Uptown is also a reflection of that. Uh, what we've done is looked at a couple of opportunities to add some additional green areas strategically in the Uptown corridor. And I'll go into these next slides. They sort of zoom in to a couple of areas. One that may, have, may be of particular interest to you all is around the courthouse. Um, obviously that impacts some county property. And I wanna start by saying this is a plan. We're not going out tomorrow to build any of this. This is just proposed plan. Um, but around the courthouse, one area that we know is problematic is the one-way streets, um, Court Street and Abbott Street. They're still fairly wide. And so a lot of folks, despite the signage, sometimes think that they can go both ways and that can create problems both for the pedestrians and for the vehicles that are navigating those areas. So what we're looking at the possibility of doing is actually narrowing the entrances just a bit to try and make it a little more obvious that only one vehicle can fit through here in one direction. Uh, we would obviously do some additional signage as well, but that's just sort of a natural way to help people understand the way the road was intended to be used. And then also the parking area that is back behind uh, where Hubbard and Cates is located. So going just off to the right of the courthouse if you're looking at the image. Uh, we do want to try and make some modifications to the parking there. Uh, we did talk with Person County staff, including the county manager um, and Debbie Barker from the courthouse about those proposals to try and make sure that they would be amenable to everybody who uses that space. Uh, the main thing is the way that it's designed now with both vehicles backing into each other at a diagonal. There's not really 
an appropriate amount of room to maneuver through there and we will see a lot of folks kind of going the wrong direction through there as well but also when there are events and activities uptown and they're trying to close off the streets because of this particular space and how wide the air area is if it remains open on the Reams Avenue side we'll see vehicles come through and then cut up into the closed off area on Court Street and that presents some security and safety concerns when people think that the streets are closed and there shouldn't be any vehicles but they're finding this way to kind of get into the corridor of the event space so this would also by narrowing the entrance and exit help us to secure that better when we do have special events uptown um, moving on to the next slide this is located near the farmers market which is on depot street and fishy the main difference here is that you'll see we've added some street trees and modified the entrance and exit of the parking lot there uh, right now there's actually two driveways coming into the farmers market parking lot and one is located pretty far south and what we've actually seen a lot of folks do is pull out of that and sort of come at an angle diagonal across the intersection so they never really get into the lane appropriately they just kind of again freestyle through that area which creates a lot of safety concerns especially during the high traffic times of day when the school is coming in or letting out uh, so what we'd like to do is actually narrow that to just the one entrance and exit there move it up the street a bit so it'll be a little further away from that intersection which creates more safety for everyone involved and then adding some greenscaping there at the bottom and some more street trees and then you'll see that parking that I mentioned earlier there along Fishy Street and then lastly or not quite last I think it's the next to last slide uh, this one here gives you an idea of what some of the places will look like just from a pedestrian viewpoint if you were in your car or if you were walking down the street this is what it may look like if we're able to implement all of the elements of the plan the main thing that you'll see is there's a lot more uh, barricade between where the vehicles are located and where pedestrians are walking whether that's street trees or larger bulb out areas with landscaping basically just designed in such a manner as to create more buffer between walking individuals and driving individuals but while also adding to the aesthetics and providing more opportunity for outdoor seating out, um, opportunities to eat and drink with family and friends or just sit after going on a walk whatever the case may be just to generally improve the overall landscape and look of the uptown. So the next steps, uh, we will, again, as I mentioned, have a public meeting on July 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, for presentation of the draft plan. Now that will include more details than just the concept plan that I have for you this evening. Our staff at Trans Systems are working diligently to pull all of those details together, but that will be the full draft plan for review. And then hopefully the council will adopt that as their official Uptown Streetscape planning document at their August 8th meeting. And then the planning department, public services, and the Uptown Roxburgh group will be working together to figure out implementation steps. Uh, we want to have a phased approach, hopefully looking for some items that we can immediately implement, whether that's new signage or painting on the streets in existing areas, things that are, you know, sort of <coughs> low-hanging fruit. And then also look for opportunities to seek funding for the bigger pieces, anything that's going to involve actual construction work, uh, looking for opportunities for funding that in the future. And I believe <coughs> that gets me to the end. So do you have any questions for me about this particular project? Not for me in particular, but thank you. Sure. Looking yeah. forward to Great. recreating uh, this, the city image because last we checked, Roxborough was smack dab in the middle of Person County. So uh, uh, nice changes, good plan. Look forward to it. Uh, want just one question. Sure. And you may have mentioned it. Uh, any plans for the infamous roundabout here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did not. More we didn't propose any roundabouts in this. Um, in fact, when the consultant came in, they said, "Is there anything we should know?" And I said, "Well, please, no roundabouts. We don't seem to be a big fan of those around here. So, no, uh, no roundabouts proposed for this. Hear more Definitely about that not." Than else, but, uh, but again, thank you for the beautification. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, plan of uh, Roxborough, and uh, look forward to it. Yeah. Lauren, yeah. I know uh, I attend a lot of events uptown, and I know, uh, again, the safety of the pedestrians is very important, car shows and personality festival and things of that nature. Um, and also, when I go uptown, I always think about, I know you were talking about narrowing the streets. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I always wish we had way back when this, when it was developed, when Roxborough was built, mm -hmm. the streets had actually been narrow mm -hmm. and also the sidewalks larger mm -hmm. for restaurants if they mm -hmm. want to have seating right outside their <laughs> restaurants there. And, and I know um, when I go to Hillsboro, I see that, you know, they have a lot of uh, places right there mm -hmm. where people can eat outside or inside. And, uh, and their traffic is, it's, it's controlled. I mean, they have yeah. stoplights and things to control it. Yeah. But I do like the greenscape. I like the idea. And um, I'm going to wait to see what we do in the future. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You're most welcome. Um, yeah. One item of concern, of course, is city's decision to go forward with this is uh, over the years, well, what was it, 10, 15 years ago, they did the redevelopment up there, designing of the streets. You got the trees planted now. Mm -hmm. With a bus and the sidewalks. Yeah, so that's actually a part of this. Uh, one of the reasons that we identified that this project is so necessary, like I mentioned, the last large streetscaping project they did was probably in the 80s. I know they've made some adjustments to the trees since then, but those Zakovas that are up there now, they're probably about 30 years old, so they're nearing their life cycle in wow. the space that they're in. The root wow. system is, like you mentioned, just too large. So we have already started conversations with the folks about what types of trees we could replace with what would be most appropriate um, and looking at some other options. You know, if a tree is not the correct treatment for this specific location, would a shrub in a planter or something of that nature be better suited for certain locations? Okay. Also along the, the same uh, line, uh, would there be added uh, benches? So we definitely will look at furniture. Uh, right now, this is really looking more at what do we what do we need to change about the environment, um, whether that's adding green space, changing the parking, and things of that nature. Once we have that nailed in more specifically, I'm certain there will be conversations about additional street furniture. Just, just curious. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You're most welcome. Anything else? Great job. All right, great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is agenda, uh, item number three, which is fiscal year 24 budget ordinance. Uh, County Manager Kathy and Finance Officer Orenberg, you, whomever. I'll just do a brief introduction to the item. Um, today we have arrived at the point in time to approve the fiscal year 24 budget. Thank you all for your work with us on this. Um, Amy will do a presentation that will uh, give you a review of the changes that were made during the work session that we had a week or so ago. So she'll go over all of those um, adjustments that have been made to the recommended budget and she will um, go over the budget ordinance that we've put together um, for your information and we'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. I'm actually going to flip that order okay. a little bit, if you don't mind. I'm going to uh, want to talk about uh, the budget ordinance first. Um, before the board approves this ordinance, I wanted to share two proposed changes that are highlighted for you in yellow. The first change is in section two on the first page of the ordinance. This section provides some information about where funds are appropriated for the schools in the county's budget and how capital. Uh, payments are managed by the county for the schools. Prior to fiscal year 21, we budgeted the county's operating and regular capital costs for the schools in a dedicated department in the general fund. However, when the county created the capital investment fund in fiscal year 21, which was a special revenue fund for the management of capital and debt expenditures, the budget for school capital was relocated to this fund to manage along with the school and county debt. This highlighted section now reflects that school capital is paid out of this special revenue fund. Uh, in addition, it clarifies that capital outlay for schools is expended within the appropriated budget and is paid by the Person County Finance Office upon receipt and review of invoices and other applicable documents. So any questions about this change? Okay, the second highlighted change is on page six under section 29. This section clarifies certain limitations and authorizations given to the budget officer, who is the county manager, for the approval of certain transfers and budget amendments throughout the year with or without a, a report to the board. 
we are proposing to add the highlighted section in letter D that would allow the budget officer to approve a fiscal year in budget amendment at the request of the finance officer for the purposes of maintaining budgetary compliance related to three recent accounting standards issued by the Government Accounting Standards Board, which is the National Oversight Committee for Governmental Units. These three standards involve the reporting of leases, subscription-based information technology agreements, the Social Services Representative Payee Fund, fines and forfeitures, and the Sheriff's Execution Fund. The budgetary transfers and amendments for these funds do not cause a net surplus or deficit in any fund. This request is to basically prevent the possibility of going over budget in these specific expenditure lines that could create an audit finding for the county for the reporting year. Many transactions occur in these expenditure lines after the last budget meeting for the fiscal year that could contribute to an over expenditure. This revised provision provides us with some flexibility to cover these lines with sufficient budget prior to the fiscal year end and without a report to the board since the result of these transactions are primarily transfers or recognition of existing revenues and expenditures. No fund balance appropriations are involved or necessary for these entries. Any questions or concerns about that uh, added revision? Okay, y'all are easy peasy this morning. Not in particular, it's been brought up before <laughs> But the uh, word sheriff's execution, mm -hmm. that word? It's a common term. It is a, common, a common term, term for that, for well, that uh, execution of documents, yeah, I guess, okay. if you want to look at yeah. it that way, not execution of people. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> it does, it does kind of put off a, a negative it, it, uh, sound it, to it, but it, it, it truly is talking about Just uh, the documents. Procedure. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Okay, well, the final adjustments that were agreed upon by this board during the budget work session last Wednesday, June 7th, include, uh, included the following. What page are you on? I, I'm actually not on a page okay. of the ordinance, right. uh, but there is a document that is, that, uh, is for the adjustments to the recommended budget. So the changes that the board approved uh, included the addition of a new grant writer position in the finance department, which when benefits were added came to 69,511. The reduced cost for the purchase of an ambulance in EMS that generated a decrease of 152,945. An added position in animal services for program coordinator for 59,381. An increase in the contingency for property and liability insurance by 38000 The addition of three vehicles in the fleet fund for the Sheriff's Department for $180,368. And five new positions in DSS related to the state's Medicaid expansion efforts for 274705 all adjusted expenditures will be offset by fund balance appropriations in the general and DSS funds. All changes were applied to the general fund, which caused an increase to the recommended budget for fiscal year 24 of $469,020. Unless there are any changes regarding uh, or any questions regarding the changes or any further adjustments, we would ask that you approve the budget ordinance for fiscal year 24, which includes the changes as presented. Manager, your comment? I would also uh, recommend that you approve the budget <laughs> ordinance as presented. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have them. Well, I may have some comments or questions. Um, personally, it was I think we we should compliment Amy and and Catherine for their and staff for their hard work to bring this budget to us considering the hardships that we encountered over the past year with inflation and cost of operations beyond anything I think Thank we've you. experienced as a whole uh, in the last few years we've not had we've had significant changes but not to this magnitude magnitude um, inflation it's, it hits everybody 
uh, from the gas tank to the tires on the cars or uh, overhead expenses, the uh, health care that we provide through our health uh, our insurance. Uh, and along that line, I would recommend that um, staff be sure that our employees pay a lot of attention uh, to that booklet because there's more to our jobs than just the bottom line dollars and cents. Um, there's more to be considered there. I think Person County offers a tremendous um, benefit package and you look at some of the surrounding counties and what's provided, I think we do a good job. Uh, we're self-insured and that's um, several million dollars a year. What is it now? Five million Five point dollars. something. Yeah. yeah. So we do try to take care of our employees and, and do that well with our insurance plus plus other benefits that include, um, of course, vacation time and things of that nature, but a good overall uh, retirement system that some uh, other counties do not in include or provide. <clears throat> um, I think there were probably two elephants in the room as uh, the year drew to an end, getting us to where we are today. And uh, one of those was the new pay classification that we went through uh, an awful lot of time and agony and, and good faith effort uh, through the recommendation of, the, of our consultant there to come up with a, uh, a pay plan that was competitive. And, and as I've said earlier, it's, it's not perfect. It's not going to put us over the hump in surrounding counties. We do realize that, but at the same time, it was about a two and a half million dollar investment to uh, to rearrange salaries, and that was across the board. Now, salary increases were not a certain percentage point across the board, but uh, so there again, that was that was a big one for this budget, and I think overall we've done a good job there. Again, it's not perfect. But the thing is, we get that done, we get to this plateau, and then in the coming year, we will likely tweak and make some adjustments here and there as we see where improvement needs to be done to improve uh, the um, overall compensation package uh, for our employees. And uh, the vehicle expenses, we understand that, um, all of us, we're a mobile society, so we understand that as the car wears out, it needs to be replaced. Uh, or in the interim, there's always something. Uh, tires and other breakdown expenses and collisions and things that just, just happen. And uh, so we need to look at that on a, on a sensible, progressive basis as, as we move forward and uh, the rising cost of uh, everything from fuel to supplies and maintenance, all those uh, come up, and then there's a need for new positions. We've just mentioned one earlier. We've, we've uh, created a couple that I think are important to uh, to the county from the um, transparency standpoint that we'll be able to get more information to and from our citizens as, as the need arises. And uh, again, I think we've, overall, we've, we've done a good job. Uh, for us as commissioners, um, we always should remember who we work for. That goes from us to our employees and across the board with the county. We work for the taxpayer. We are accountable to the taxpayer and we should bear that in mind. Um, and that's countywide, corner to corner. Uh, we shouldn't have the philosophy or attitude of working for certain groups, certain entities, uh, our job should be to spend public money, or taxpayer money, I should say, uh, in the right way and, and be accountable for it. And so we are accountable uh, to the taxpayers and we should never forget that point. And be mindful and careful of, of uh, how we budget and how money is spent. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's not our money. 
it's the taxpayer money. And uh, we should, as commissioners, not lose focus uh, of, the, of that point and uh, continue to serve all the citizens of Person County. And uh, again, that's from top to bottom, corner to corner. And uh, so I think we've, overall, with, with all the challenges, we've come up with a, a reasonable budget and uh, the increase of this year's budget was what, something in the neighborhood of three million dollars roughly over last year. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I don't know, head. but then, you know, the salary compensation took about two and a half million mm -hmm. dollars of that. And um, then, without a, a good succession plan for vehicle replacement, we wound up with, what was that number, half million dollars? In, in vehicles and uh, mm -hmm. you know, again I think we've done a good job to to uh, try to work within the and uh, it's a big number but it's still within the confines of the revenues that we have so uh, that's a compliment to Amy and her staff and uh, and Catherine and, and her overall staff so again thank everyone for your efforts and um, we'll continue efforts to improve that's all I got. I, um, you know, I, I'm, I support the, the, the budget, uh, but one of my concerns, a couple of my concerns, are, as I touched on a little bit, is our staffing needs and our shortages. I think about the EMS, uh, very important to uh, coming to us in an emergency situation. Uh, I think about the shortage they've had there, their staffing needs. Uh, I look at their uh, the amount of overtime they put in last year was enormous and uh, certainly it's something we're going to have to work on as we can move forward is trying to see what we can do to <coughs> entice uh, more people uh, train people EMS uh, to, uh, to come to our county and um, I also think uh, another uh, area that will concern me as well as Sheriff's Department, making sure we keep them staffed and if there are any shortages that they have and what we can do with that department as well. So um, that's that's something we have to look at and we approve this budget, but I don't know, you know, as we go forward, there could be some changes as we move forward. I mean, it doesn't say we, we are locked into this. There could be something that comes up and we have to look at. So um, uh, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, I'm really concerned about those positions. Yeah, let me segue. Well, that's a segue. If I could back up for a comment there, I think we share that uh, those sentiments, especially in those two categories. Uh, it appears now that I think at top of the list for r recruiting and staffing is a sheriff department, and that's across the state. It's just not person county. Same thing with EMS. It's very difficult. Uh, and that's why I've asked. Um, Manager Kathy will continue those uh, conversations as we get past today and, and move along. And there's only one other thing I want to point out. Um, you know the old saying, don't tell me what you're going to do, show me your budget. And, um, and we can show people the budget this year that um, public safety is, is number one this year with uh, nearly 25% of the overall budget for the county. And it's important. My concern beyond that, and I'm okay with that, but it seems that education is uh, number four in our county right now in funding. And we, we're playing catch up with, um, with the education, doing a good job, but it is concerning because if we don't educate, those future recruits aren't there for EMS, for sheriff, for any department that we have around the county. Uh, so education is, is, should be a priority, but I um, just want to mention that with all that we have done for schools this year, we still wind up um, uh, by the dollar mark in fourth place. And uh, so it's a, it is a concern, but we work on it. We keep, keep going forward with good positive attitude. Any other commissioners? Well, I'd like to commend staff for, and we as commissioners, we work right along with them. We spend a lot of hours together. I can't imagine sitting behind a desk all day looking at numbers all day. I've tried it at night at home until my head was about to bust. But I thank you 
staff for working so diligently to get us to where we are to make these improvements. And I look forward to the implementation. I'd like to echo what was said. Um, I'd also like to thank this board for working together in harmony. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be here at the, at the budget work session, but I was um, uh, very proud to see um, this board working in harmony and coming to consensus and coming to um, come into agreement on on issues if I had been here I would have voted yes on all of that so I just want to thank this board and your leadership and working together to um, make this um, budget possible no budget budget is perfect it can always be adjusted but um, I completely agree with what was discussed at the uh, work session so I also want to thank um, the county manager and the finance officer for all their due diligence um, doing this uh, uh, budget process and um, and just like with any budget it can always it's fluid it is fluid and it's up to this board to make those responsible decisions uh, regarding the budget Mr. Thomas <clears throat> I just want to echo what everyone else has said it was a uh, great team effort that's the way I'm looking at it we look at Sonia with the pay study and her team uh, plugging that in and helping catch catch the county employees up on their pay. Uh, Amy and your group are plugging in the numbers and Catherine kind of pulling everything together. I mean, that's that's a great team effort. And, uh, so I'm looking forward to working into the new year. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to for this board to accept the um, budget or uh, approve the budget ordinance with the recommended changes that were introduced by the finance officer of the county. Thank you, sir. We have a motion on the floor. Any further discussion, comments? Anybody? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Motion carried. Go to work. Okay, we will. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thanks. All right. Next item on the agenda is appointment to uh, boards and committees. Uh, Madam Clerk Reeves. Good morning. I'd like to present to the board our interested citizen applications that are available for the board to nominate and appoint as you so deem appropriate. The Percy County Board of Commissioners solicited volunteers to fill the positions on the following boards, commissions, authorities, committees through advertisement in the local paper, the Korea Times edition of May 11th with notice to submit the applications by the deadline of noon on June 6, 2023. Only one application was received after that deadline that is at your seat today and I will present that as well. The first board that we will be discussing is the ABC board. We have three applications for one position, Brian Black request appointment, Mr. Robert Danny Bumpus Jr. is requesting reappointment, and Robert Allen Satterfield is requesting appointment. May I have the desire of the board? Mr. Chairman, our uh, motion to appoint uh, Robert Danny Bumpus Jr. to the ABC board. Any further uh, nominations? Hearing none, all in favor of Mr. Bumpus say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. All right, the next one for consideration is the Agricultural Advisory Board. We have one position available for a county resident or landowner for a term that would expire December 31st, 2024. These members were solicited to provide a broad representation of the geographical regions of Person County to the most extent all segments of agricultural production. And the application before you today is Mr. David White, who is requesting appointment. Do we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion to uh, appoint Mr. White. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carried. And for the Animal Service Advisory Committee, we have two citizen and large seats. 
Both candidates are requesting reappointment, Ms. Kay Farrell and Ms. Cynthia Martin, for an unspecified term. Mr. Chair, I make the motion to reappoint Kay Farrell and Cynthia Martin to the Animal Services Advisory Board. Okay. Two positions, two applicants, all in, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No, the motion carried. All right, next for consideration is the Board of Health. Again, all applicants are seeking reappointment. Mr. Randy Eeks to represent in the engineer capacity, Mr. Ted Mickey representing as the pharmacist representative, and from a member of the general public, Dr. Christopher Atkins Jr. is re requesting reappointment. Those are all reappointments. Can Correct. We do all three in one motion? Mr. Chair, motion to accept all three applicants for the Board of Health. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? No, the motion carried. Okay. All right. Next up is our jury commission. Mr. Francello Bumpus is requesting reappointment. Chairman Powell, I'll make a motion we move, uh, move forward with reappointing Francello Bumpus to this position. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No, motion carried. All right, for your Juvenile Crime <coughs> Prevention Council, we have all applicants requesting reappointment. Mr. Charles Harvey as the representative of the business community. Captain Ricky Hughes Rick, will be the chief of police designee. Laura Sharp requesting reappointment as the managed care organization representative, which is via health, as well as Elizabeth Habig with the will be the health directors designee on the JCPC. Okay. Mr. Chair, yeah, go ahead, sir. to uh, accept all the reappointments for the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> None. Motion carried. Okay. And in addition on the JCPC, we have an unexpired term of the Chief Court Counselor or designee David Carter has been working with the state since the fall of 2022, who held this position um, formerly. We now have been assigned a, a new chief court counselor, Ms. Nicole Grant, and by virtue of her position, she is requesting to be appointed by the Board of Commissioners to the county's JCPC. The unexpired term of Mr. Carter goes through December of this year, so I am requesting as staff that you would also give her a new term in addition to that by virtue of her position. Um, so that would ex extend her expiration to December 31st of 25, which in essence would be a two year and six month term. Yeah, motion. Motion, <coughs> motion to uh, accept that um, reappointment to the position, it is a reappointment, correct? But she will be new. That as she's filling in. So she will be an appointment right. by so virtue of her position as the chief court counselor for Person County. I'd like to make a motion that we allow this to go through. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. All right. The next for consideration is the Qatar Regional Council of Government Board. Ms. Sherry Wilburn has requested appointment to represent Person County through private sector business, and this is an alternate position. An alternate position on this board means that she would be available to vote in the absence of a quorum of Person County's members. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that uh, Sherry Wilburn uh, be appointed as the Qatar Regional Council of Government. Uh, citizen at large alternate position. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No motion carried. For your library advisory board, we have a reappointment request from Ms. Susan Powell. Motion to appoint, reappoint Susan Powell. For uh, clarity there, I do not know this person. So there's, there's oh, okay. No. Okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that board. So you know that. Yes. yes. Yeah, she knows board. that. But yeah. anyway, just for transparency, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carried. 
All right, next for consideration is your PATS Transportation Advisory Board. Ms. Lisa Jeffries is requesting appointment to fill an unexpired term to June 30th of 2024 due to a resignation of the person industry staff, Kim Morgan. So this would be a person industries representative on the PATS board. Motion, uh, Mr. Chair, make a motion for Lisa Jeffers' uh, request of appointment for the PATS Transportation Advisory Board uh, to fill in for Kim Morgan. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, none. All right, our person Caswell Lake Authority, Mr. John Bullock is requesting reappointment to that board. Motion to reappoint John Bullock. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, none. Motion carried. The next one is the Piedmont Community College Board of Trustees. Mr. James Woody is also requesting reappointment to serve in that capacity. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to Accept Mr. Woody's for reappointment. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. All right. Planning Board. We have one position available. Uh, Ms. Kay Rimmer has requested appointment, and at your seat you'll see Mr. Robert Allen's request for reappointment on this board. Mr. Chairman. Um, I spoke with Mr. Allen. He is currently on the planning board. He's served three consecutive terms, and he's also serves, as you see, he's served on the um, advisory council, and he's president of the Rotary Club. Um, and it was just a miscalculation that he <coughs> did not turn his application in a timely manner. So, uh, therefore, I would make a motion to reappoint Robert Allen to the planning board. So, <clears throat> do we need to say anything about? accepting this even though it was yeah okay it is the right. board's purview to accept any and all applications yeah I was just making okay. you aware of that good thank you all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed none motion carried all right the recreation advisory board we have two positions available in four applications mr. Cameron Jones has requested appointment mr. Francello Bumpus has requested reappointment Mr. Robert Honeycutt is requesting appointment, and Mr. Carl Smith is requesting appointment. Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, recommend that Francello Bumpers, who's requesting reappointment, uh, be reappointed to the Recreation Advisory Board, and I would also like to recommend uh, Carl Smith, who's requesting appointment for the Recreation Advisory Board. All in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. And the last one for consideration is the Research Triangle Regional Partnership <laughs> Board of Directors. This is a fiscal year appointment. In the past, the Board of Commissioners has elected to have its Economic Development Director, who is Brandy Lynch currently, the Chairman of the Purse County Board of Commissioners, Gordon Powell, as well as the Chairman of the EDC, Philip Allen, to serve in this role. So I am requesting for consideration um, for these candidates or any three members of the county you would see fit to represent us on the RTRP board. Mr. Chairman, um, I recommend uh, re uh, appointing Brandy Lynch, your, uh, the Chairman Gordon Powell, Philip Allen, as being that I am recommending the Chairman of this board for this um, position. I will ask the Vice Chair to conduct this vote. Okay. Motion has been made uh, to to approve Brandy Lynch, Gordon Powell, and Philip Allen. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion is carried. That's all I have today. Thank you. Okay. And we thank all our volunteers. These are volunteer positions and. Uh, have our citizens offer their their time and expertise uh, I do appreciate uh, very much going forward <clears throat> okay um, for chairman's report maybe just a couple of things of interest um, I did attend along 
with uh, with some others, a veterans. Um, I think they call that a um, summit. Summit, summit from this year. Uh, well done and well attended, I think, and uh, compliments to the veterans and what they do in Person County. Um, even though we're a small county and that's a small group, they do an outstanding job uh, promoting our, our veterans and uh, providing knowledge about services that they can receive through and by the county and uh, they do an awful lot and we owe each and every one of them, anyone in any position that's a veteran. Uh, we we want to thank them and that was a that was a good good day, a good program. I did take part too in a um, an event that was held in uh, Sandrick along with uh, uh, Manager Kathy and and some others within the city and county. We went to Sanford and toured uh, several different places there uh, to kind of glean some uh, potential activities that we might do in Person County that would enhance our county for the for the long term. We're talking 10, 20 years, so uh, a great activity. Uh, we went to the airport, toured that. We went to the community college. We had some people from uh, county government um, uh, did a walking tour downtown to some of the things that were going on in the city and uh, very very impressive and uh, one thing that I saw there to me that was impressive the cooperative attitude between departments uh, for everything from EDC to the county government to the city uh, they had one objective in in mind and that was to enhance uh, future growth and uh, an attention on the city of Sanford and Lee County and they they've done a good job for the last uh, 20 years so uh, that was that was a good trip I don't know if there's well you, you can speak later <laughs> share share your thoughts there um, so there, there's again several things going on in the county that uh, that we're involved in and and uh, try to stay abreast of and uh, the all the papers and the, they were lengthy have been signed for the airport hangar lease when you try to get numerous people involved in signing a lease it's hard to get them all at the table at the same time but uh, thanks to Ray and his efforts and uh, manager Kathy for uh, the teamwork there to get that lease finalized so uh, that's done and soon we will be housing some uh, nice airplanes at uh, at our airport, Raleigh Regional at Person County, and uh, that's been about a four-year process to get to the point that we are. And um, uh, as I've said earlier, I'm not a pilot, but I see the airport as being a an important cog in the wheel of uh, Person County's economic growth in the future. And I think this will be, and hopefully it will be, a launching pad for. Uh, it, advancement there with maybe public-private activities and uh, in improvements there and hopefully some additional uh, hangars and uh, we've got the runway strengthening uh, project already uh, in motion and we are beginning the process of the runway extension so all of those are uh, future improvements to our airport which I think is an integral part of uh, future growth uh, in, uh, in in Person County. Okay, that's that's all I have, I believe. Uh, Manager Kathy. As far as the trip to Sanford, um, the title of the program was Dream It, See It, Do It, and it was organized by uh, the community college and chamber. So we appreciate their pulling all of us together and. Uh, the intent is that we will build on the ideas that were generated through that visit. We had a pre-meeting and a post-meeting, and um, we have all been assigned um, some goals to work on in small groups, and our intent is to broaden the effort, bring more people into this work um, to focus on the goals 
moving forward. So um, this effort will be expanded, um, more people will have the opportunity to be involved, and it is focused on the long-term um, growth and quality of life within Person County. So grateful to have had the opportunity to participate in that. I'd also like to say thank you again to all of our county staff um, working through their department heads. Um, they really came together this year um, throughout the budget process to present um, good, uh, sound ideas to meet the needs of our community. Um, you know that HR staff have gone through a lot to get this classification pay study where it needs to be, and finance staff have been very diligent um, in uh, getting this final budget together for us. So. Uh, thanks to you all too, and I uh, look forward to uh, the new fiscal year and all the possibilities that it presents. Commissioner Sims. Thank you. Um, again, I, I attended the Veterans Summit, and uh, you know, our veterans here, the Veterans Council, is really strong, and um, it seems like it grows every, every week, new members. And um, they have some needs and we need to, as they expressed, and we need to uh, look at that as a, as a county as to what, uh, what we can, can do for them. But um, very good organization, very strong, and I enjoyed that, it was very <coughs> informative. The other thing I just wanna say is that I appreciate everyone who um, applied for uh, the boards, commissions, or committees that were uh, listed, but we have several that are still open and those who may not have gotten on the committee that they uh, applied for maybe you'll consider going to and uh, serving this county on another committee so i hope that um, again that we'll see more people wanting to get involved uh, in the committees that are here that were listed that are open and i think those who applied uh, for the committees and and want to give their time to our our county so that's it uh, Chairman Powell. Yes, sir. Uh, attended the Willow Oak opening ceremonies Thursday afternoon uh, with Chairman Powell. And uh, we got to meet the new owner, Michael Wilson, I believe is his name. He did a fan fantastic job rehabilitating that place out there. He's got an actual restroom now. It's huge for ladies and men. It's a great setup. Uh, Friday, I did attend the Veterans Summit at the City Hall as well with uh, Co-Chair Sims and uh, Chair uh, Powell. I did the craft fair Saturday here with the veterans. Um, that was a good turnout. I'd like to recognize our Kenjavi, it's so hard to pronounce your last name, Javadi, yeah, right. and his uh, recognition of North Carolina Fellow by the UNSK School of Government. Um, I'd like to also welcome Hector Rios to our IT department. That's all I got. Um, Go ahead, sir. Uh, I just ask everyone to please keep in their prayers the family of Larry and Kimmy Yarborough um, with the tragic passing of their son Trent. Um, both of them have been staples in our community for quite some time and it's um, very unfortunate and so just please um, keep that family um, in your prayers. Commissioner Thomas? <coughs> like, uh, I just want to say that uh, I want to thank all our, our Person County team uh, for putting this budget together. Uh, it took a lot of hard work. I think the county employees will benefit from um, this pay study and I hope it improves morale. Um, uh, everyone re worked really, really hard on this. I also want to congratulate Chad Kendrick, uh, Person County's own, for being on the winning team of the 65th uh, Big Rock Tournament, the winning team brought home uh, $2.7 million this weekend. So congratulate to him. Thank you, sir. Uh, and to back up just a little of Willow Oak, 
Um, that's a bluegrass festival that yes. is done here in, in Person County. Uh, and that site, as Commissioner Palmer stated, has grown exponentially, and I think there were maybe 75 or 80 campers at, at that least. site, at and least. hundreds of people, and uh, so it's good to see that. Uh, Person County has a long history of pleasure related to bluegrass music, and here we are. Well, I saw license uh, from New York, from all over, uh, all over the country, coming here, and we do uh, thank Mr. Wilson for his progress he's made out there in a few short years, and uh, he could have carried that venue someplace else, another county, but, but he did that here. And we, we appreciate it. And uh, he mentioned that there recently there was a, a Russian delegation there, and they had, uh, the site was full, and they were uh, Russian citizens who have moved to uh, our country and in nearby uh, cities and locations in the past few years. So they were sort of young, but they were growing up here uh, in North Carolina and they chose that as, as a site. And someone asked him, well, what did they do? And uh, Mr. Wilson said, I don't know, it was all in Russian. I couldn't understand what thing they were saying. Uh, but anyway, um, it's a venue right here in Person County and, uh, and it was uh, good to see them there. And, and it was a pleasure to be there and welcome everyone. Another thing we haven't mentioned, uh, it, it's still in process, and that's the Charges of Freedom project. Uh, concrete has been poured up there uh, at, the, uh, at the site for uh, the next steps in, in creation of that, uh, that location for the uh, public housing of uh, some of our nation's most uh, precious documents. And, uh, Looking forward to that. I had hoped it would be done uh, in time for July 4th, but that won't happen. But again, it's kind of an update on, on that. So progress is, is taking place and we're moving right along. Chairman Powell. Yes, yes sir. Go back to Willow Park. Yes, that sir. was an opening day ceremonies. Yes, so sir. they still had two more days to go. Yes, sir. I'm sure there was probably uh, at least 30, 40 more. Oh, what do you yeah. call those big things, buses or? Yeah. Whatever Campers, they, whatever they it came, are. at least thirty to four more. They were they were coming in as we were leaving. Oh yeah, we and we welcomed them. It's yeah. it's, a, it's a good absolutely it brings in a lot of people. And on the on the uh, charters of freedom, I see a vandals have been over there and inscribed his name in it. I think it was Charlie Palmer. Okay. Yeah, he took his well, feet. sheriff, uh, would you take care of that? <laughs> <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? That's it. Here none do we have a motion for adjournment. So a motion to adjourn. Any discussion? Here none. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.